Hi everyone and welcome to Green Monk TV. My guest on the show today is Simon Wardley uh, and we're going to talk about green computing and cloud computing and whether cloud computing is green. Simon, uh, would you like to introduce yourself first? Yeah, certainly. Um, so obviously my name is Simon Wardley. I work at uh, Canonical, the company that sponsors and supports Ubuntu, which is the fastest growing Linux distribution. And I work on uh, cloud computing strategy. Now, we, we've had a couple of discussions, yourself and myself, uh, about cloud computing before. And, you know, intuitively, you think cloud computing is going to be green. Well, actually, let, let, me, let, me, let me step back a bit first. Uh, just a quick definition, Simon, for anyone who's watching this who might not be aware. Can you, can you give us a quick uh, two-second definition of what is cloud computing? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Simply, no, uh, all right, um, it's like computers on the internet in it. Uh, that's the, the smallest and the best definition I've heard, and that was from a taxi driver. Um, the problem with cloud computing is it uh, fundamentally describes a shift of IT from a product to a service world. And if you look online, there are about 67 definitions of cloud computing and complete arguments about whether this is or this isn't cloud, public and private and hybrid and so forth. Um, the reality is IT is transforming to this service world. Uh, you are getting a number of different variety of models of consumption of, and provision of computer resources and services. And uh, if you want a mechanistic definition, the best one I think you can find is the NIST. That's the National Institute of Science and Technology's definition, version 15. That's the closest there is to a definition of cloud computing. And it does it by looking at the characteristics. And it's about two or three pages long. But if you want the shorthand, it's like computers on the internet in it, and, 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 and that's roughly it. Okay, brilliant. Um, like computers on the internet in it. Good, I like it. I think it. So, if if we think about cloud computing as you know com computing as a service, uh, it it would seem you know intuitively to 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 me at least uh, to be that cloud computing is going to be more efficient and therefore more green than having an individual server or bank of servers for my web applications. Uh, absolutely. So, um, I mean, many benefits are described uh, uh, around cloud computing, you know, uh, economies of scale, a faster speed to market, focus on core activity, more efficient utilization of resources. I mean, there's a long list. Now, the more efficient utilization of resources is um, even if you're building, for example, a private cloud, so you're doing it internally behind the firewall, um, what you're, you're basically doing is you're taking a, a pool of computing resources, putting them together as a cloud, and enabling basically different departments to create resources, virtual resources, as and when they need them. And if you look at average utilization of computer resources today, I mean, I mean some of the figures are, are, are disastrous. I mean, in some cases, it, it can be as low as like 20%, even some reports even lower. Um, so there's an awful lot of wastage. Now, of course, you know, that's private, that's, that's internal, you can do it. You can also, uh, people look at bursting to high uh, public environments and also using public environments. And, and those public environments are all about balancing supply and demand of computer resources. So um, inherently, uh, you look at it and you think, ah, oh, it's more efficient, therefore it's green. So, so the answer to the question it to, um, is, is cloud computing green is quite simply no. And um, the reason why it's no and not yes is that it's, yes, more efficient use of resources. And so in the short term, you can see more uh, efficient examples and less wastage. But at the same time, it makes those resources more readily available. So you have another problem, which is known as, um, and it's not, it's not just a problem, it's a good thing. It's called componentization. So if you look at how you develop appliances today, it's quite fast to develop an application because it's built on many, many stable subsystems. You've got, for example, uh, database and frameworks, the operating system, physical hardware, CPU, IO uh, uh, network underneath it. Now, if you imagine how long it would take to build an application if you didn't have stable components, you had to first, say, design uh, the CPU. It would take you know, an incredible amount of time. So having stable components accelerates the speed at which you can do new things. 
Um, and this is known as componentization, Herbert Simon's theory of hierarchy. And the formal definition is, is that the rate of speed of evolution of a subsystem is, is related to the organized, sorry, the rate of evolution of a system is related to the organization of its subsystems. So it, it's quicker to build houses with bricks than it is to, uh, bricks and say planks, than it is to plant a forest and get some sand and create your own bricks and, 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 and planks and then build a house. So as a consequence of this, um, you get lots more innovation and therefore lots more consumption of these standard components and units, which you've created. So cloud computing is, you know, provision as a service, standardized components, whether it's, you know, virtual infrastructure or whether it's platform or applications, great, more efficient uh, uh, balancing of supply and demand, excellent. So lower wastage per usage over physical machines. And at the same time, it will result in explosion of consumption. So your overall question of whether it's green depends upon <laughs> the issue of we're going to be consuming more of what is now a more efficient unit, whether that overall equation actually means you use less energy or more energy. And historical evidence always says we use vastly more. That, that does make sense, but two, two things, I suppose, come out of that. Uh, the, the, the first is um, you could use, I suppose, that argument for any kind of technical innovation. Uh, and second is, does that argument fall apart if the greater consumption is consumption of uh, products or services which uh, are actually reducing energy consumption? Oh, okay, so uh, that was the simplistic uh, definition that I gave. Of course, it's, it's, it's never, never that simple. There are many, many complicating factors. So, for example, you could say, aha, but what if as a result of doing this, we get rid of physical CDs, etc., etc., uh, and when we just share music instead, that will save us energy. Absolutely, absolutely, it would compare to physical CDs. Um, however, um, it also leads to an environment in the future where, you know, everybody in the world has their own 500 node Hadoop cluster so that when they search on their phone for information, it automatically goes and extracts all these possible sources to give them exactly the right answer for all their information in their life. Because now this is all much more possible because you are now building forever higher order systems based upon these these stable subsystems and then and then what happens is those new innovations become you know more commodity like they become stable subsystems for ever higher orders of system and it repeats and repeats and repeats um, and is it true for uh, any industry well yes componentization is 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 a common factor. I mean, you look at most industries uh, as they develop. They develop because they've got stable subsystems, and then they consume more of them. Um, you can look at the electricity industry itself. Uh, the movement towards national grids and the provision of electricity within homes, principally for lighting purposes, also allowed enormous explosion in the whole consumer ele um, uh, elect uh, electrics, electronics, and white goods, all those sorts of new new things that people could find ways of consuming this, this very stable subsystem. So um, it's not so much an issue of is it itself uh, going to be more efficient in terms of virtual machines more efficient than physical machines? Because the answer there is quite simply, or well, yes. Um, the problem is we're going to end up consuming a heck of a lot more of it. And yes, there are these other factors. Are we going to replace some physical with sort of online digital uh, information? And will that save energy? Yes, some of it will. Will there be the ability to move machines, you know, from uh, areas where the energy provision is more green? Yes, uh, there's bound to be some of that as well. But overall, we're going to consume more energy. Now, the real problem about greening isn't actually the consumption of energy. It's the production of it. It's um, uh, that's the thing that, you know, if you want to green, it, it's the same problem with anything else in industry. We have to look at the mechanisms of production of energy. So, in summary then, Simon, is cloud computing green or not? Yes and no. Um, yes in the short term, probably no in the long term. The problem you've got to deal with is um, how we produce the energy.